Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Collector's Domain. It's Joseph here and today I'm going to be bringing to you something I picked up from MattyCollector.com. Two-pack He-Man and Battle Cat. Now when I say two-pack, I don't really mean two-pack. It was a sale that MattyCollector.com was having where you would get these two figures for 30 bucks. And I say that 30 bucks, quote unquote, because after shipping and um, tax and everything, I might as well have just gone on eBay or looking on secondary markets for these guys because I'm sure I could have gotten it cheaper. Because uh, after everything, I ended up paying about 50 bucks for these two shipped. Now, it may be a little bit cheaper, but it's nowhere near as what they were, you know, advertising. Get them for 30. Not really. You got to add another 20. So that was kind of a bummer. But it was for the anniversary of He Man, so they came in there standard boxes they're white you know mailer boxes this is he-man's and this is battle cats thing is absolutely huge so shipping was kinda slow too for what I had to pay um, so I'm not too pleased with Maddie collector I know there may be some collectors that are just die hard about it but not too happy with their service and the way they advertise that two for thirty my ass fifty bucks um, and that was the cheapest I could get it at uh, so yeah let's see now I'm very pleased with the figures I gotta say I have a couple Motu classics and uh, this I don't have too many though and this is definitely gonna be the highlight of the series because it's Battle Cat and He-Man I can't go wrong with that now today I'm going to try something a little different. Uh, I'm going to try not breaking up the video into two parts. I'm just going to try to go on for one video. Um, reason why I always did two videos was because my camera couldn't really. Uh, well, I didn't notice that it was on, <laughs> on like high quality setting. So I just lowered the quality, and now my videos last longer more than just eight minutes, and um, actually 21. So I can do a little longer videos now and just cut it to one part instead of breaking them every single video I do into two. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, let's go over He-Man first, right? Since you know he's He-Man. Battle Cat deserves his own highlight. He'll be saved for last because he's the better one I think. But here He-Man, he is awesome. Uh, he comes with these two accessories. Well, three actually. You get one that's a whole power sword. It's just silver paint on gray plastic. And then you get his shield. Like red and brown or something and then gray plastic. Gray plastic, really plain on the back. But what sucks is that there's actually stress marks already on the insides of the cufflink. I don't know why that wasn't avoided, but... I don't stretch them out or anything, and there's already these stress marks. That kind of sucks. And then third, he gets... Where did I put it? Ah, here it is. Half of the power sword. Which I think is supposed to represent the vintage one, because it looks a hell of a lot like it. Here I have the vintage one. As you can see, the back sides are pretty much identical, except the rivets up here are out, and these are innies. So, outies, innies. It looks like it could connect to another sword half, but I don't know if I'm missing it in package or something, but it, mine I don't think mine came with another half, or if it's supposed to be just half. But it's cool. And surprisingly, it's the only one that um, will fit in He-Man's left hand, because this fist is actually smaller than this one so he can only hold this half sword in his left hand can't hold the axe and can't hold the um, full power sword just like that so you could have him dual wielding power swords you know whatever got one in there one in there no I gotta say, it looks really good, um, displayed with his battle axe and his power sword and the shield. And what's nice is that on the back, his harness—it's really soft plastic and it actually comes off. 
but you're gonna have to work around it. I don't know how, but it does unpeg. Just like that. Now it is much like his vintage one, which is pretty cool, and it you could even throw the weapons onto the back and like sling it in there. That's really cool. You could put the sword in there, you could put the battle axe, and uh you could even put the shield on there, which is pretty cool. If it wants to behave. Well, take that off. Just hook it on. Oops. Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to be, but you know, you could, why not? Friction. The power of friction. Yes, so you could have him holding his sword and axe or whatever. Uh now the body of the figure is pretty basic. It looks like <laughs> it's got the details of He Man. Just straight up muscle bodybuilder guy. Very basic with a loincloth and uh the boots. Uh the detail is actually painted onto the harness itself and uh his gauntlets are actually molded on, just like the vintage. Uh his hair his head actually looks like uh, the, Mo the Mongoloids, I forget who they're called. You know, Hanna-Barbera characters. I forget what they're called, I wasn't around for them. <laughs> but um, he looks like that, and uh, he just looks pretty badass. He's got articulation everywhere. Got ball joint neck. Uh, hinged shoulders. They rotate. Bicep swivel. Bend at the elbow. Not that far though, just like 45 because his muscles are huge and then wrist swivel. He has the ab crunch joint, rotates at the waist, ball jointed hips I think, um, rotates at the thigh too, bends at the knee, back and forth, hinge on the ankles and a side to side, but it's really loose and uh, I, sometimes I have some trouble standing him up, but when he's just standing there he looks pretty awesome, I mean it looks like He-Man. That's cool. Here he is next to Battle Armor He Man. I hate these vintage figures. <laughs> if you could ever get them to stand up, some of them, you know, you just have that trouble. You gotta find the sweet spot. I swear, this is why my videos go on for more than eight minutes. Okay, it's like a balancing act. As you can see, the Motu Classics falls about seven and a half inch line, and that's like four or five inch. So you could also imagine what the new Castle Grayskull that's going to be coming out is going to look like, because that's about what that's about right. Like it's about a quarter um, percent taller and larger, and that's what they were saying about Castle Grayskull. I actually pre-ordered it, but I gotta say for three hundred bucks after shipping and everything. That thing better have working water, working lights, motorized action, metal chain links, so much detail in it for $300. Uh, I'm going to be so upset if it uh, falls anything short of. Put him to the side. Now, yeah, I mean, there's nothing much to say. He's a figure. Um, let me compare him to one of my taller Transformer Deluxes. Starscream. See, they're very close. So, uh, that's just something to look at, I guess. <laughs> uh, now, I do have the other Motu Classics, but they are stored somewhere in a box waiting for a Castle Grayskull. Um, now, I think this is the second release because the red on his face is actually not there, or at least it's not overbearing. Uh, and on the box it says the original on the bottom corner. Ooh, he just took out everybody. That's what I'm talking about. Bad ankle joints. Bad. Two for two, huh? He does not like me. I'm sorry. There you go. Happy as a something. Anyway, here's the box. Let me take it out. Here you go. 
this is the box it comes in. Um, I just took it out of the mailer. I wasn't sure how to take them out safely, and I kind of messed it up, and now the box is really torn up. I gotta look at for a way to do this a lot safer, because this is one of the bubbles that I would actually want to save. You know, it's something you would find in Toys R Us. Got that, He-Man. And it says the original at the bottom. Castle Grayskull Details. That's the Universe Classics. Pretty standard box. Nothing special. Now, let's put him to the side. And take out Battle Cats. He is the cream of the crop, I must say. Uh, not as hefty as I was hoping he was going to be. But he definitely is larger than I thought he was going to be. Now, he does come with his battle armor. It just pops right on and off. Holds on by friction. And even the harness just pegs right on and off. So you could take it right off. And here's the harness. It's quite large. It's like a lobster shell. It's crazy. It's large. It's got two tones, a couple tones on it. It's got shading on it, so that's nice. It brings out a lot of the detail. And then the harness itself for Human Sets actually looks like leather. It's got the sculpting and color. So it's a lot of variant, you know, shading going throughout the whole harness. That's cool. And then you even got highlights, which are like supposed to look like metal. It's like bright red metallic orange. And the leather strap is actually a lot softer, so it's pretty malleable. And there's actually two stirrups on the each side, which I'm not sure what they're supposed to do. They don't really hold his feet, so maybe they're there to holster weapons. I'm not too sure about that. But put this aside. It doesn't stick on Battle Cat that well. I'll get more into that when I put it back on. Now here's the helmet. I don't have the helmet for the original. But um, so this is the first uh, Battle Cat that I have that actually has his helmet. It's the same thing. It's got a lot of shading in it. Looks more like a darker leather type with the metallic red orange highlights going throughout it. Even the eyes are painted. So that's really cool. And this is what the inside looks like. It just rests on top of his head. Now the Battle Cat figure, or Cringer figure I should say, this thing is pretty sick. It's really large. Um, here he is next to He-Man. Stand him up, look at that. On his nose, maybe twice his height. It's crazy. Love it. Um, now, even under the harness, he's got all the stripes on there. He is hollow, though, which kind of upset me a little bit. Because I was hoping that it would be like a really hefty figure. It is hefty, but you could see, you could tell it's hollow. But the detail is amazing, especially in that face. Look how fierce that looks. The eyes are painted, the detail on the fur is there, uh, his fur along his face, his neck, the bottom of his legs, it's all frilled, even at the bottom you can see the pads on his feet, toes, the nails are painted, inside the mouth, it's just really, really awesome looking figure, and it's got a lot of articulation, he has very limited at the neck, uh, towards the head, but then at the base it goes up and down um, moving along it goes it's like a ball joint kind of and it goes around over at the waist up and down that far and that in so you'd have them in some looking down poses what I wish is that it had some side to side movement like you know you could get them curled looking at you from this angle but the way the molding is and the sculpting it just doesn't have enough room for that so it's just up and down and there is no paint apps around that area, so that's nice. You won't be scraping any paint. Uh, towards the back, your tail has a ball joint, I want to say. Just goes around, spins around 180, uh, 360, sorry. And that far down, that far up. Now in the legs, same for all the legs. You got the hinge, bends at the, I don't know what you call that, knee joint. Uh, bends at the wrist at the ankle and uh, swivels around and it's the same for the two front paws and then the back paws back and forth bends at the knee and then bends again at the shin so you get like that kind of pose you can get it straight but you know like that like he's about to pounce and then back and forth 
rocks on the ankle. Uh, it doesn't swivel. Um, it doesn't rock side to side, but it does swivel around. Not too far because of the again because of the sculpting hinders it a little bit. But I guess you don't really want it to go further than that. Uh, yeah, the face is the real seller of this. It's just so realistic looking. It's just awesome. So you get him in some pretty defensive poses. Now let's put the armor back on him. So you just lay this on top. Um, and then you kind of want to get it behind the actual waist cut. Because if you go any further up, it doesn't fit. So you got to go behind it and plug it in. And then just shimmy it up however far you can get it. Which is not that far. <laughs> um, I guess if you straighten it out. Yeah, that's one thing I don't like about this. Uh, the armor doesn't really fit that securely on the body. So you're going to have it rocking side to side like crazy like this. Um, He-Man's surely going to fall off. So if there's a way to do it, somebody let me know. And then um, the head crest just... The headdress just sits on there, hugs around the ears, and there you go, you have Battle Cat all armored up. And when you put He Man on there, let's weaponize him. Put that. Put the thing on the back, push it back. Power sword in hand, and he's ready to go. And what's weird is that um, how he sits on Battle Cat, which is. Uh, uh, to say the least, uh, a real challenge, because his loincloth is pretty stiff, even though this is a little softer than the original. Uh, but there are grooves to accommodate for He-Man's loincloth. But when he does sit on it, he like instantly does a leg split, like that. And so you got him looking all pretty funky like that, legs split, and it is hard to get it adjusted properly like I try doing that. but no matter what I do he just comes out looking a little funny grab the harness there you go like that now you see he doesn't really sit flush against the harness which is like the only problem I have with it and uh, the fact that I said it wasn't that stable the harness rocks side to side pretty easily so he means just gonna be dangling off to the side like that so <laughs> or like that Hold him straight up try to pull it up as far as I can but whenever I try to adjust he-man he moves the harness so it's a little bit of finagling but this is like the best I could do and I gotta say he looks all in all awesome after you get him settled down battle cat definitely is going to be the centerpiece of uh, the you know my Motu line just gonna surround him with all his other comrades and enemies just have him striding into battle it's much like a statue, which is awesome, because it's just so large. Here's my hand. Pinky to thumb. It's the top of just Battle Cat. But yeah, I mean, if there's another sale of Maddie going on Maddie Collectors, I'll definitely be sure to mention it again in another of my videos. But uh, as of right now, I don't think there's anything really worth mentioning. Like, when they come out with uh, Panthor and Skeletor, I'm definitely going to be mentioning that again. Because I'm definitely going to be picking that up. Because I have the vintage, you know, Skeletor with Panthor, vintage. Oh yeah, vintage, right? Here he is next to his granddaddy. As you can see, much, much larger. Let's just throw He-Man on there. Look at that. Proportions on this one compared to that look a little funny. But this one on this beast is just awesome. It's perfect. It's the way Battle Cat should be. 
like this one, he looks like he's too heavy for battle cat. <laughs> but, um, yeah, definitely recommend a figure. I know I'm really late on this, but if you were like me and you were a latecomer to the series, I definitely recommend getting him uh, just for a big display piece. He's definitely going to look great uh, next to this battle cat and the 2000X one. Uh, so, yeah, uh, let's see how this extra long video goes. I'll post it up soon. And uh, let me know what you guys think, and if you guys could recommend me any other figures I should be picking up from the line. Uh, I'd really like to hear from you guys, alright? Um, so I'll catch you guys soon. Take care. Peace.